Uh, at the outset, I would like to thank Dr. Bishwas and the organizers for having, uh, giving me a chance to talk here. Uh, I also wish to inform you all that we have a handout available and a flyer for our uh, Inflame is your conference that we are going to be conducting at Shankar Nitralia in the second and third week of March this year. So coming to the update on the viral infections. In India, the infectious uveitis accounts for about 11 to 30 percent of all cases of uveitis. And the most in, uh, common infectious causes are the viral herpetic uveitis, tuberculosis, leptospirosis, and the parasitic uveitis. Now, these viral infections can be either a herpetic retinopathy or the newer viral infections. And the update is that the herpetic retinopathies are now classified into necrotizing and the non-necrotizing retinopathies. And we all know that the necrotizing viral retinopathy is often due to a VZV, HSV, HSV1, 2 or rarely a CMV virus. And in the necrotizing herpetic her 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 retinopathies, we have the acute retinal necrosis and the bilateral acute retinal necrosis which occur in the immunocompetent and the progressive auto retinal necrosis and the CMV retinitis which occurs in the immunosuppressed and in patients with HIV. So just to go over quickly the clinics of ARN which we are all very familiar, it occurs most commonly in males, immunocompetent between 20 to 50 years of age, it's bilateral in one third of these patients and you see the lesions are focal, they are well demarcated areas of retinal necrosis, mostly in the periphery, they spread circumferentially and uh, there is a progressive occlusive vasculopathy that occurs and often the anterior chamber and the vitreous shows a lot of inflammation. This ARN has also been recently reported in children as well. The American Uveitis Society uh, criteria for ARN is a stage 1A where you have the discrete lesions, stage 1B where you, the lesions get confluent, stage 2 where you get the vitreous opacification, stage 3 where you have the regression and the stage 4 where you have the sequelae with uh, regmetagenous retinal detachments. Coming to the progressive outer retinal necrosis, it was first described by Engstrom et al. in, 94, in 1994, a group of 90, 65 eyes, and most of these patients had herpes zoster ophthalmicus two months prior to the onset of PORN, and they all had a CD4 counts of around 21. Clinically, these lesions are multifocal, deep, dense, necrotic lesions, absolutely no inflammation in the anterior chamber or the vitreous. There is no vasculitis or, or optic nerve head involvement. It often spares the retinal vasculature and hence gives a cracked mud appearance. The photograph on your right shows a macular involvement. And most often this disease is bilateral. The update on PORN is that sometimes it does happen in immunocompetent patients who have been initially treated as an optic neuropathy with systemic steroids. Benz et al. reported two immunocompetent patients who were treated empirically with intravenous methylprednisolone and corticosteroids as an inflammatory papillopathy. Subsequently, they progressed to a necrotizing herpetic retinopathy with features of PORN. The ACTAP confirmed VZB by PCR. One eye became blind in both the cases. There was another, uh, another update where Lim et al. have shown that this uh, VSB retinal infection can occur in HIV negative patients because of the transient immune deviation that has been caused by the immunosuppressive therapy. And they can manifest as a PORN and subsequently progress to an ARN. So we had a patient, 38-year-old, 30 who was immunocompetent, presented with sudden loss of vision and pain for 10 days. His visual acuity in the left eye was uh, just PL. He was treated by his local ophthalmologist as an optic neuritis with three days of IVMP. And uh, this was the initial presentation. When he came to us because of the IVMP, there was no vitritis, optic disc hyperemic, but we could see extensive areas of deep necrotizing retinitis with perivascular sheathing and retinal hemorrhage presenting like a PORN. The ACTAP was positive for VZB. So this is a case where the disease has, uh, patient has had a transient immunodeviation, so it presented or mimicked a PORN. We uh, treated the patient with IV uh, antivirals. The disease was under control, but he developed the sequelae, had to undergo VR surgery, and subsequently the vision was around 636. Coming to the clinics of CMV retinitis, we usually see yellow to white areas of retinal necrosis with a dry granular border and a hemorrhagic presentation. Most of these patients are immunocompromised with the CD4 counts of less than 50. So these are the different types of CMV retinitis, per perivasculitis or CMV papillitis, frosted branch angitis that we may see with uh, no vitritis, hemorrhages being common and the end stage of CMV retinitis if it is untreated with a sequelae. Now what's the update in CMV retinitis? 
We find that there is a high risk of CMV disease in zero negative solid organ transplant recipients from organs of zero positive donors. There have been studies where uh, 364 patients with CMV donor positive recipient negative patients in spite of receiving a prophylaxis of valg and seclever 900 milligrams once daily within 10 days of transplant continued for up to 100 days. Out of these 364 patients, 12 percent of them in spite of the prophylaxis developed a CMV disease. So this was a patient, 35 year old, seen at our clinic, history of renal transplantation, two years on immunosuppression and uh, with blurring of vision, vision was 6-9, if you can see that they were peripheral necrotic lesions similar to an ARN. Her CD4 counts was 125. When we did the AC tap, it presented uh, with a CMV positivity. So an ARN kind of presentation with a positivity for CMV. We uh, reduced the immunosuppression. We put the patient on intravitreal gansaclovir and oral gansaclovir and after two days saw the regression of lesion and in two weeks we found the CD4 counts picking up and the lesions regression, regressing and at the end of four weeks completely regressed CMV retinitis. This was yet another patient who had renal transplantation in 2005. She, her graft was already, renal graft was already failing as you can see the urea and creatinine levels are very high. And she did present with the CMV retinitis, ACTAP being positive for CMV and the PP65 antigen for CMV was positive. CT4 counts were uh, abnormally low, around 25. She had other coexisting uh, infections like tuberculosis. She was on anti-TB th treatment as well. Coming to the update on these uh, non-necrotizing herpetic retinopathies, Aniki Ratova et al. have found that the non-necrotizing herpetic retinopathies can be of two types. There is a slow type ARN-like lesions which have uh, very small peripheral necrotic lesions which progress very slowly but don't have any of the sequelae of ARN and the non-necrotizing variants which can present just as a vasculitis, papillitis or no necrotic lesion or they can present as a panuveitis. And in all these patients, they found that the PCR of the ocular fluids were positive with the Goldmer Whitman being more than 10. So this was one of our patients, 20-year-old, fever, blurring of vision, rashes, suggestive of chickenpox. You can see that clinical picture is more like a, a frosted branch angitis, a plenty of vasculitis, which was occlusive on angiography. And you can see in the left eye, peripheral lesions, uh, somewhat typical of a slow ARN. The ACTAP RT-PCR was positive for VZV and after six weeks of antiviral therapy and tapering of the steroid, she recovered completely with no sequelae. This was yet another patient with fever treated uh, elsewhere with IVMP as well as immunosuppression. Our working clinical diagnosis was uh, some kind of a posterior pole atypical viral retinopathy. You can see the pictures on presentation three days after antiviral treatment and uh, discontinuation of immunosuppression and the complete resolution at the end of six weeks. She was PCR positive for HSV1. Basically, uh, diagnosis in viral retinopathies when you have typical picture of ARN, BORN, PORN or CMV, they are clinical. But when you have the atypical and the non-necrotizing variants, the aqueous or the vitreous samples for a PCR or RT-PCR or a Goldmer Whitman, Whitmer coefficients may be very useful. And in patients with HIV, the ELISA may be useful. I think Dr. Suchitra is going to speak on viral retinopathy, so I'll skip this. Coming to the non-herpetic neoviral infections, we have the arthropod-borne, vector-borne, viral and bacterial agents. The infections like the West Nile virus, the dengue, the chikungunya, rickett, uh, rift valley and the rickettsiosis. The clinical diagnosis in all these cases is based on epidemiological data, history, systemic symptoms and signs and the pattern of ocular involvement. And most of the clinical presentations in all these uh, arthropod borne viral infections are anterior uveitis, retinitis, chorioretinitis, retinal vasculitis or optic nerve involvement. And most often the diagnosis is confirmed by detection of specific antibody in the sera. So the West Nile virus is a mosquito-borne RNA flavivirus which is neuroinvasive. Incubation period is between 3 to 14 days. Risk factors are advanced age and diabetes. And the diagnosis is confirmed by a MAC ELISA. It was first described by Monsef uh, Kerala et al. with a linear pattern of chorioretinal lesions without macular involvement. They described about 38 patients. All patients had febrile illness with a neurological symptom and 32 of 38 patients had chorioretinal lesions associated with a background diabetic retinopathy. These lesions are typically multifocal with linear clustering or target-like appearance of the choroidal lesions. They may be associated with hemorrhages, vascular sheathing, sometimes an occlusive vasculopathy and mottling or RP edema and rarely optic neuritis. 
In India, this has been reported by Dr. Ratnam et al., where they studied 170 febrile patients. 105 were seronegative for dengue and chikungunya. 78 were clinically suspected to have West Nile virus. 21 had evidence on real-time PCR and RT lamp PCR, and they presented with posterior uveitis, febrile illness, neuroretinitis, retinitis, and vasculitis. So this was another paper by Dr. Ratnam et al. where they showed that of 52 patients, 37 had positive tests for Vesnile virus and the fundus examination revealed discrete superficial white retinal, uh, retinitis, arthritis, periphlebitis, retinal hemorrhages, disc leakage, vessel wall staining, cap capillary non-perfusion and all. Some of them have also presented with a combined CRVO and CRAO. So coming to dengue, we know dengue is a flavivirus, again mosquito-borne, and patients have headache, myalgia, thrombocytopenia, and dengue shock syndrome, and the diagnosis is based on a positive dengue serology. The ocular manifestations usually occur in the convalescent phase, and it's more of an immunological response rather than a direct infection, and the treatment is mostly steroids and immunoglobulins. They usually present with orange yellow lesions at the fovea, presenting with a foveolitis, supported by typical OCT finding of disruption of the outer neurosensory retina and the multifocal ERG showing decreased foveal and parafoveal responses. This was first described by Dr. Chi et al. From India, we have a report of a 24-year-old patient with uh, dengue, IgM positive thrombocytopenia with bilateral loss of vision after discharge from hospital. This, he had a typical uh, dengue maculopathy with discrete lesions at the fovea. Uh, studies of, from India have also shown that patients with dengue could present with a branch retinal artery-like occlusion and most of it has happened in the convalescent phase. Chikungunya again is a mosquito-borne lesion, uh, mosquito-borne infection, it's a RNA alpha virus and uh, chikungunya fever resembles dengue but is associated with arthritis and fever. Again diagnosis with ELISA, IgM, PCR or RT-PCR. And clinically, uh, ocular features, patients could have retroorbital pain, conjunctivitis, choroiditis, or a retinitis. These are the pictures of chicken and retinitis seen at our hospital. The treatment was supportive, and we did add antivirals to the therapy. I think just to conclude, we need to know about rickettsial diseases that are also uh, um, arthropod-borne. They are intracellular bacterial pathogens. You can have the epidemic typhus or the flea-borne typhus or the mite-borne. Again, the fever presents, uh, period, the incubation period is 5 to 7 days, disease lasts for 7 to 14 days. And what's pathognomonic is the uh, skin lesions with the typical uh, formation of Escher. And the treatment here is mostly with tetracyclines and azithromycin. The ocular manifestations are macular edema, periphlebitis, retinal hemorrhages, papal edema and peripapillary uh, chorioretinitis. We had a small child, 5-year-old, fever 10 days, suspected dengue, developed rashes all over the body, had hepatosplenomegaly. And this was the clinical picture, counting fingers 1 meter and both eyes, anterior segment, congestion, disc pallor, extensive periarthritis, periphlebitis and retinal hemorrhages. You can see the extensive uh, uh, occlusive vasculitis in both the eyes. Most of her labs were normal and these were the lesions on the skin. Typical SHR and the scrub typhus IgM was positive. Patient was put on uh, doxycycline along with systemic steroids. Though the disease resolved, the patient's vision didn't improve much around 6 by 36 at the end of it due to the sequelae of the occlusive vasculitis. In conclusion, we could say that viral infections, be it herpetic, atypical herpetic variants or the non-herpetic arthropod borne viral or bacterial infections can cause a wide spectrum of ocular manifestation and patients with these viral infections could potentially benefit from early recognition and treatment. Thank you.